So do you get a higher NQF level with your PR Ange, GCC, and even with an MBA? I'll answer some of those questions. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new to this channel, my name is Zanella. If you haven't subscribed, press that subscribe button. Also remember to press the bell button so you get a notification every time I upload new content. So there's been a couple of questions from you guys around the NQF level. We have been talking and discussing a lot around uh, PRH, GCC, MBA, and there have been questions of clarity around the NQF levels and what they become after you've gotten those accreditations. Comment below if you've obtained your GCC and PR Inch. Also, comment below if you're pursuing your MBA and what NQF level you're looking to obtain post that qualification. So if you haven't seen the previous video, I suggest you look at that video first. I will leave a link below and also at the end of this video, leave it as one of the quick links for you to check out that video on what the different NQF levels are and what they mean. Basically, what I'm going to share is what the different NQF levels will become after you get your PR and your GCC and your MBA. The reason I'm focusing on those accreditations is because there's previous content that I shared with you guys around the PR range, around the GCC, around the MBA, and what it is that we can pursue as engineers, even outside of engineering, how we can progress our careers even further. Let's start off with the GCC. So the GCC is the Government Certificate of Competency, which is accredited through the Department of Labor. And basically, there are minimum requirements that one must meet. You have certain years of experience, and then you apply with the Department of Labor for you to sit in on the two examination, one is plant and one is law, for you to pass and be warranted as a competent engineer who can then be given the authority and the responsibility of taking care of health and safety of individuals and of machines in the workplace. This is for factories and for mines. Basically, what the GCC is that you don't necessarily have to have the highest NQF level to sit in on that exam. Check out one of my videos, even the playlist where I discuss end to end and some of the content around the GCC. But basically, if you didn't know, you don't necessarily have to have a degree to get your GCC. So it's not mandatory for you to have your NQF level seven or eight. You can get your GCC if you've got your N6 qualification or your S4, if you've got your national diploma. But example, if you've got your N6 with your trade test, you must have completed the plant engineering syllabus and you must have had a minimum of two to three years experience and have obviously the endorsement for your site from your site engineer or your employer. Also, with your graduate engineer, whether you've got your NQF level 7 or 8, you must also have minimum years of experience to show that you can apply principle practically and be able to take it back and relate it back to the law as well. So with your GCC, you don't automatically get, once you've got your certification, you don't get the next level of NQF depending on where you are because there are varying levels of entry that you gain access using into the GCC. It's not so much about the qualification, but whether you understand the engineering principles, what you've been exposed to theoretically, what you've applied practically in the workplace, and whether you're the suitable person or have the right attitude, the right onset and mindset, the right understanding of the basic principles for you to hold the GMR 2.1 appointment. So first answer with the GCC, you don't get an increased NQF level. Secondly is with your PR range. Similarly with the GCC, with your PR range, you don't necessarily get a higher NQF level once you've got your PR range certification. This is an accreditation that is governed by Engineering Council of South Africa. You guys know that it's split up. With EXA, you can get the accreditation of Professional Engineer, Professional Technologist Engineer, Professional Technician Engineer, or Professional Certificated Engineer. And with these, there is a minimum requirement, an NQF level, that you go into that accreditation with. There's a series of requirements, so whether it is with basics, with management exposure, and also with your design or problem solving review, they will then require for you to do a summary or write up for you to submit for you to then get the accreditation of professional. So similarly to the GCC, it's not an additional level where you get added credits for submitting your write-up, but rather an accreditation of what you've been exposed to, the work that you've been a part of, also the readiness that you've demonstrated for you to hold that accreditation and that title of professional. And then the third one that came up was around the master's degree, so MBA. If you've checked out my previous video where I described the different NQF levels, you know that a master's degree rewards you or awards you an NQF level nine. So an MBA, is accredited and you will get an increased NQF level and NQF level 9 after you've gotten your MBA. 
Mind you, there will be a minimum requirement for you to enter into an MBA. Maybe your NQF level A institutions may require you to have been a manager or in management level for a number of years. Some institutions require you to have passed your GMAT test and have achieved a score of 550 or above. Also, they may request that you write a number of series of essays for you to demonstrate your level of thinking, your aptitude, your strategic mindset um, to show that you are likely to succeed in the MBA. So in summary, GCC does not increase your NQF levels. PRN does not increase your NQF levels, the MBA does award you an NQF level 9. Ultimately, I mentioned in the previous video um, before, the qualification of the NQF is only a piece of paper, really. Yes, it does open up doors, but ultimately how you progress in your career is dependent on what it is that you put in, what it is that you expose yourself to, and how you have an impact in that organization or the society around you. There are individuals that have made it far without that paper, but I am an advocate for education and we do have means, we do have resources, and we do have the opportunity now to close the gaps that have been built from the past and for us to stand a better chance in future. Comment below if you feel it's important to have the highest NQF level or to have the highest level of experience and exposure. Remember to live your best life, learn as you grow, and lead for change. Shop.